Welcome back. Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy. Uh, today, I have for you the Drop <coughs> Michael Gavick Collaboration Nurse. And um, Drop uh, used to be MassDrop.com. They're like a, um, a group buying site. And this is the only place you can purchase that knife. So if you want it, that's where you got to go <coughs> to Drop.com. Uh, they, they've done one other collaboration together and that was for the Thresher. Thresher was, you know, more full size EDC knife and the nurse is more of a compact model of his. Uh, this one was a complete hit and still to this day, probably one of my favorites that I've purchased on to drop. So let's get into it. This, uh, this knife is gonna the drop's gonna be open for around 21 days depending on when this uploads but uh it should be in that area there's about 21 days left so uh you still have time and the price tag is 180 dollars and that's really appealing to me because i i tried to get a, one of his customs at blade show last year but he had already sold them and uh if you don't get them from a blade show for table price they can get up in the upwards of a, of a grand. So $180 is, is way more affordable. <laughs> There's three different variations. There's this one, which is called the Aqua, like a light blue scale, anno scale, with a black stone wash blade. As you can see, they call it stone wash. It's like a black stone wash or blasted stone wash, one of the two. It looks like a black stone wash. They also have one called uh, Ocean with, uh, what is it? I mean, no, this is Ocean, I'm sorry. This is the Ocean right here with the blue. My bad, light blue. They have uh, Aqua, which is like a greenish color, greenish bluish, and a satin blade. And then they have a Sand, which is like a bronze color with a satin blade. So three variations. They're made by Wee Knives. And um, the estimated ship date is is august 10th but i'm sure that due to what's going on right now in our world uh, it may get delayed but they're usually decent about making their marks sometimes <laughs> so let's get some specs out of the way so you can kind of get an idea of how big this knife is you have an overall length of 6.8 inches blade length of 2.9 so there's three and under blade laws as long as you can have a locking knife good to go i like how they kept it under that three inch mark um the grip area on this knife from here to, to about in this back butt area is three and a half inches. Thickness uh, is 0.53, so right around the average. Your width in the pocket is 1.44 inches from here to here. And um, your blade stock thickness is a robust 0.157 or 3.98 millimeters so pretty nice and stout blade stock uh, let's get a quick look of how it looks in the pocket you don't have a deep carry clip but I think it sits far enough so push it over you still got a good bit of room in there to reach your hand in there you do feel that that um, that pocket clip but it it's not painful, I don't think. So you have a decent bit sticking up, but it is going to be a lot easier to pull out of the pocket. The pocket clip works really well. There's decent retention and the smooth scales. It goes in and out, but I don't think it's going to fall out. Let's get a closer look. You have a modified Warncliffe blade, or you could maybe call it a sheep's foot blade as well. Like I said, this is a black or blasted stonewash blade. You have a saber grind on here. You have a full length swedge that goes all the way to the back. Another little detail that they did that I liked. So you don't have a sharp point right here. They they uh, took that at that point off. You have Gavco's logo right there. And on this side, it's hard to see, but you have your blade steel designation, which is S35VN. You can see it right down there. <clears throat> you have an oblonged opening hole that has been chamfered, so you'd have no sharp edges there. And I like how they uh, milled out into the scale, so you get all the way back, kind of give that shark eye look. 
They have a well executed sharpening tool right there. It passes the plunge grind, so you shouldn't have any flaring in the back. Close it up. You have a triple threat in the deployment. You have a flipper tab, no jimping, but I don't think it's needed. It's it's long enough, and there's no they, they got chamfers all the way around it, so no uh, hot spots on that flipper tab. Flipper works good, and the light switch. It's, it's a moderate detent. It's not stiff, and then the push button, about the same. But my favorite method is the spotty flick. Put your finger in that bottom corner. You can spotty flick it, and then you can thumb flick it, but you got to be a little bit more deliberate when you're thumb flicking it. See, so you got to get a little bit lower about the middle, Oop. and then do it. And you can also slow roll it. When I slow roll it, I like to pinch it both sides, break that detent, and then roll it the rest of the way. And of course, if you want to please the sheeple, you could two-hand open it. Let's go to the scales. You have some stylized and lightning holes that are passed through so you can see it's like a window i like that um you have like the shark gills right here just on the show side of the scale you have a torx t8 here and a torx t6 right here and on the pocket clip and the lock bar insert steel lock bar insert um you do have Contour 3D contoured scales that have also been beveled around the edges so you have no no hard angles. Love that. Hate whenever they contour it and they leave the edges at a 90 degree angle and that it's it sucks. Um, blade to handle ratio is about a one to one. Excellent. You're not gonna come in contact with that tip. They've also and so you don't have any sharp corners right here. Those have been softened as well. Fully open construction, very minimal. One standoff, pivot, and stop pin, that's it. I like that. You can easily blow it out if it gets dirty. <clears throat> Easy access to the lock bar, even though it's pretty much flush. It may be sitting, let's see. No, it's flush, but um, they did a good job of milling out a nice spot under in there on both sides. It's very easy. You got enough room, easy to get your thumb in there however you want, or you claw it, whatever you want to do. Just very easy to, to get to the lock bar. Um, the only drop, the only drop uh, logo is right here on the back side of the pivot. It could be easily removed if you don't like that. Um, you also have some lightning holes to go with these up here on this uh, milled pocket, titanium po pocket clip. Um, let's see. Let's get some size comparisons out of the way. And then, oh, one more thing. The balance point on this knife is right there in this forward choil. And that is perfect. Love it. Doesn't feel like whenever you kind of let off, it doesn't feel like the knife should come jumping out of your hands. Um, we'll get some size comparisons and a weight, and then I'll my few minor nitpicks. First one is another drop knife, the Gent. The Gent is pretty darn close. It might be exact same size, except you have a thicker handle right here. Then you have the uh, Monterey Bay Nas Men Pen, which is pretty much identical in size. These two are very close. So those are great size comparisons. The Men Pen feels a little bit uh, more similar because of the, the thickness. A little bit more similar in hand because you have the contoured scales on both. Um, let's see, two really popular budget knives. Got the CRKT Pelarge. And as you can see, the Pelarge is just a little bit smaller. And then you have the original size Pilar. Oh, let's see. With my custom mano on it. So as you can there you go. Um I'm trying to give y'all enough size presence so you're trying to on this fence if it's gonna be big enough for you. Uh, another one that's pretty much identical is the Strider PT. It's 
the PT is a little bit smaller. And then the Benchmade Mini Bug Out. Now the Mini Bug Out, even though it's shorter in overall length, you have about the same, you have the same grip area, but it's just a thinner knife and you have about the same cutting edge on the two. So I think it's a good comparison. And then one more, another popular knife, just in case you didn't have any of those, and you might have this one, Spyderco Power 3. As you see, the Power, Power 3 is longer, but you have about the same handle uh, grip area up into this area, to this first trawl right there. Alrighty, I'm gonna get a weight on this knife. Then I'll give you my nitpicks, things I wish I could have seen different. 3.66 inches, I mean 3.66 ounces. Um, it's not in that ounce and inch, but I don't really care about that. So if that's a deal break for you, sorry about that. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you. Check that thickness behind the edge. This is, if I recall, this is the thickest portion right here. About 17 thousandths all the way in the back right there. And I'm doing this behind the camera, so it's probably not. And around 14 thousandths, as you can see right there. Let's see about that tip. I mean, this could vary from knife to knife depending on how high they sharpened it. And the front is uh, around, around 19 thousandths. So there we go. And we can do this real quick as well. That is sharpened at, this is a angle finder from Audacious Concepts. Let's see. Uh, Let's see. So around, I'd say it's probably around, I don't know, about 17, 18 degrees per side, according to the angle gauge. Um, so it should be a pretty decent slicer, especially, you know, for the super thick blade stock. It's, it's, a, it's a robust folder as far as everything else goes. Um, but some of my nitpicks, uh, for me, the scales are a little slick. There's no no grip on them at all. And with a smaller knife, that could be dangerous because you're not holding it, you know, as secure as a bigger knife. That's why I like doing the spidey flick because I, I pinch the back side of that clip so it doesn't fly out of my hand. The only time I really notice the, the slickness is when I go to try to flip it. I got to make sure that's pushed up in my palm good. And I, it's, I have to situate my hand a little different. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but this is um, this was sent to our pass around group, the Apex pass around group. So appreciate that drop and we for doing that for us. Um, let's see. Another thing that I noticed and I heard uh, my buddy um, Blade Banter talk about it is the pivot keeps on loosening up. Even with Loctite, I've tried it myself as well. I hope they can remedy this by maybe getting some finer threads on the pivot because it's a pain in the butt. I could have probably put some Teflon tape on there and solved the issue or some Vibratite. But like I said, this is a pass around knife and a bunch of people could possibly be um, disassembling it. So I didn't want to do that. Um, let's see. One more last thing is the pot clip uh, it works it works good it just looks like an afterthought uh i mean that's basically the same thing you get here um it works a lot better than this one because this one had that ridge it was sitting on and this the uh the lock cut out so i this one's a nightmare for, to come in and out of the pocket for me this one goes in and out of the pocket very well i just it just Looks like a gas station knife clip, but you know, I could take it off or change it. I think this is going to be a, a, a highly modified knife. I know when I posted on Instagram, everybody was saying, Cut the I'm deleting that flipper as soon as I get it, and that was my initial thoughts as well. I think the aesthetics would look great 
without it. But the only time I usually remove a flipper is if I don't ever really use the flipper. But this one is fun to flip to me. And it's, you know, fun to do all the deployments. I like the extra deployments. And another reason sometimes I take the flipper, I'll remove the flippers because I'm not getting a good grip because the flippers come this way or obtruding. But in this in this uh, case, it, it's acting like a guard for you. I mean, not that you would be doing any thrusting with this type of blade, but I, I don't see a problem with it. Um, I'll be interested to see what, what it looks like once people do do it. But for me, eh. Um, the price on it, I think the price is fair. I was kind of bummed out because I know there was rumors that it was going to be like 120 <laughs> Now, I just didn't see how that was possible because I think that's what the gents were. And these are G10 with some thin, you know, this is a lot cheaper of a knife. This one's got, you know, titanium, contour titanium, which, you know, it's it's usually a big upcharge, so I didn't think they would come out at 120. I think 180 is a fair price. If you look at in their other knives, they have the um, the drop uh, oaks links, and that's a 180 dollar knife, and that's G10 with titanium liner lock on it with RWL 34. So you have some upgrade materials. That one's made by Riot. You know, arguably a better you know, a better production company. So you got to make that decision. To me, well worth it. Uh, I've wanted this knife ever since I saw my buddy Daddy OEDC at Blade Shows. I got to handle it. He was able to snag one and <clears throat> being that I can't get one otherwise, this is my, my choice. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Let's have a discussion. I'm trying to do my best to answer all the comments. Um, I, I don't always get to all of them because, you know, life happens. And being that my, my daughter's school, you know, and uh, along with pretty much every other kid, they're, they're not going to school because of the, the coronavirus. So... I don't always have the time, and I for, I'm very forgetful since my accident. So, if you like, but if you like, if you like knife, knife content, and you you, you want to see a bunch of different knives, then and you're not already hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of my content. Sometimes I do giveaways. I'm I'm due for a giveaway as soon as I hit 5K. I, I'm gonna do my very best to uh to to show y'all my appreciation. I love all my subscribers, and I have some really good subscribers. All right, guys and girls, hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see you all on the next one. Peace.